are these people? Uh, speaking of, of not existing, um, we brought this. Yeah. So, yeah, um, so, um, so, yeah, so, I mean, we, you guys are smart and you guys watch the news. You, we, we knew that this was going to be, uh, yeah. something that was going to happen relatively soon. Um, but as of right now, Israel is beginning their evasion slash assault on Rafa. Rafa is basically the last, you know, um, how can I say this? Uh, refugee zone, I yeah. basically would say, in it's Gaza. Really pushed everyone uh, That Palestinians are able, are seeking refuge right now. And that's the only place right now that is actually some, I wouldn't say inhabitable, but that's where all the Palestinians that are still alive are basically, have basically ended up. Um, and Israel is now doing an assault on them in the name of trying to destroy Hamas, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so we have this article from Common Dreams. Uh, this is written by Jessica Corbett. Uh, who writes, War crimes, IDF strikes Rafa after Hamas agrees to ceasefire. Why? Asked Israeli lawmaker Arthur Kassif. Because killing Palestinians is more important for the Israeli government than saving Israelis. So Jessica continues. Israel yesterday launched long-awaited strikes on Rafa in the southern Gaza Strip. Despite Hamas publicly confirming it agreed to a ceasefire, and hostage release proposal from Egyptian and Qatari mediators. Not the first time that they agreed to something. Mm -hmm. God knows how many times they've agreed to something, and basically Israel is just like, fuck that shit. So, but I digress. The IDF said on social media that the IDF is currently conducting targeted strikes, no, they're not, against Hamas terror, terror targets in eastern Rafa, the city to which over a million Palestinians have fled since October 7th, when Israel launched a retaliatory war that has already killed at least 34,735 people in Gaza and wounded another 78,108. Earlier yet on Monday, the IDF had dropped leaflets directing residents and refugees in that part of Rafa to relocate to a strip alongside Gaza's coast, Ignoring warnings from the international community and humanitarian groups, that flu will spread Israeli attack on the crowded city with further endanger civilians and relief effort. It is obvious that Netanyahu wants this genocide of war to continue indefinitely so that he can remain in power. In addition to sparking outrage around the world, the Israeli government's Rafa attack and rejection of the Hamas backed proposal was met with criticism from people across Israel. The Associated Press reported that thousands of Israelis rallied around the country Monday night, calling for an immediate deal to release the hostages still held in the Gaza Strip. Again, and shout out to Sabi for making this point, like, if the hostages are there in Gaza, right, what benefit is it for you to drop bombs indiscriminately where you can possibly target the hostages as well. Like, we're already seeing Palestinians being unearthed, um, you know, from makeshift graves at Al-Shifa Hospital and then in other places, I'm fairly certain now. Uh, another story that we talked about two weeks ago, I believe now. Who's not to say there's not going to be any Israeli, you know, uh, bodies within those Palestinian bodies at some point. But of course, I'm sure that, you know, Israelis will kind of say, oh, that was Hamas who did that. But who's yeah. to say, again, that wouldn't be the cause of the IDF. I mean, the IDF has already killed three hostages, you know, who were waving a white flag, you know, like several months ago, and they were killed anyway. So, um, so they're being indiscriminate in terms of who they're targeting, uh, and especially with the AI lavender that you as well. Um, you know, it's just really basically anything that moves, shoot. So, um, so yeah, it doesn't make sense, but this just shows Israel doesn't care about the hostages, just collateral damage in terms of their larger goal, 
it's an ethnically cleanse the region. So I don't know. And I, I, it surprises me that no one has ever mentioned that, but in just in public conversation regarding you doing this to Pastilians put the hostages at risk, given what how you're doing it. Um, so yeah, like I said, surprising that we don't hear that kind of, you know, statement, like even in, in uh, independent media, um, that this is what essentially Israel is doing. That this does not give any preference to the idea of, you know, they're trying to save the hostages. If anything, you're trying to, you know, off them as much as the Palestinians as well. So, um, anyway, I digress from that. <laughs> Um, Alfred Kassif, a member of the Knesset, who was also almost expelled by fellow Israeli lawmakers earlier this year for backing South Africa's ongoing genocide case against Israel at the ICJ, again called out his own government. Israeli tanks and infantry enter is East Rafah while planes bomb from above just hours after Hamas's decision to accept the hostages prisoners exchange deal. Kassif said Monday, why? Because killing Palestinians is more important for the Israeli government than saving Israelis, war criminals. Um, so this is a statement from BB. Uh, the war cabinet ununanimously decided this evening, uh, so May 6th, that was Monday, uh, will continue its operation in Rafah in order to apply military pressure on Hamas so, that, so as to advance the release of our hostages and achieve the other objectives of the war. While the Hamas proposal is far from meeting Israel's core demands, Israel will dispatch a ranking delegation on, to Egypt in an effort to maximize the possibility of reaching an agreement on terms acceptable to Israel. So, we're, um, so Reuters reported that an Israeli official said the deal was not acceptable to Israel because terms had been softened. So, Let's get into what the proposal was. And I found it kind of interesting, at least with a couple of places in mainstream media. So I pulled this from, um, this was on CBS News. Um, so <clears throat> there are three stages to the ceasefire. Each six weeks, permanent ceasefire, hostage swap for prisoners, displaced Gazians to return home. So that's basically what CBS said, which How much doesn't give bet? a lot of information. How much you want to bet the reason Go they ahead. didn't accept was this right here? Right. You know, and there's a lot more, and there's a lot more to this because, as I said, this is kind of vague as to yeah. what th this in, uh, in, uh, ceasefire deal imp uh, implied. Uh, thank God for Al Jazeera that gave a little bit way more information specifics. Yeah. Um, so this was pulled from Al Jazeera. Um, but Hindustan was the one that uh, reported it in this way. Uh, first phase, 42 days. Uh, temporary cessation of hostilities between Hamas and Israel, as well as a withdrawal from Israel of Israeli forces to the east. Israel Israeli airplanes and drones would also stop flying over Gaza for 10 hours each day and for 12 hours on days when captives are released. Hamas would gradually release 33 captives alive or the remains of dead. The captives will be women above the age of 50 and those who are sick or non-soldiers under the age of 19. For each civilian Israeli captive released alive, Israel would release 30 Palestinians. For every female officer released by Hamas, Israel would release 50 Palestinians. Withdrawal of IDF displaced Palestinians to be allowed to return to their homes across Gaza. Reconstruction work with Gaza must begin in the first phase, as well as the flow of aid, and that UNRWA and other relief organizations be allowed to work and help civilians. Second phase for another 42 days, permanent end to military operations and a full Israeli withdrawal from Gaza. All re the remaining Israeli men, including soldiers held captive in Gaza to be released in return for an as yet unspecified number of Palestinian prisoners. 
and then the third phase, another six weeks, an exchange of the remains of captives and prisoners held by both sides. So you're right. I definitely think part of this yeah. was, um, you know, having Palestinians return home, but then again, what homes to return to. But what Al Jazeera is saying, which I think will be kind of problematic to Israel, is the idea of having humanitarian aid help them rebuild. That's the other thing that I think will be problematic for Israel. They do not yeah. want them to rebuild. They want them to be leveled, if not gone. So, you know, so I think that those were probably the terms I think, and I think you're right, uh, that led Israel to say no to that. Um, yeah. Well, and also the idea is exchanging of Palestinian prisoners, they don't want to do clearly. Exactly, too. Yeah. Right. And we've talked um, about before how, like, a lot of Palestinians who are kept in these prisons is essentially torture. So, yeah. and they're there mostly for petty shit. It's like, yeah. throw a rock at the IDF officer, you're arrested. And, you know, like, yeah, petty shit that they're there for. Right. Um, so, so anyway, back to the article. Shortly before Israel's Monday night strikes on Rafa began, uh, Stefan Durak, a spokesperson for the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, Guterres. said that the UN chief reiterates his press calling for both the government of Israel and the leadership of Hamas to go the extra mile needed to make an agreement come true and stop the present suffering. Expressing concern about the then imminent Israeli operation in Rafah, the spokesperson said that we are already seeing movements of people. Many of these people are in desperate hum humanitarian condition and have been repeatedly displaced. They search safety that there has been so many times denied. The president, the secretary general reminds the parties that the protection of civilians is paramount in international humanitarian law. Other UN officials have been warning of what an assault on Rafah would mean for the 1.4 million pa Palestinians there, among them 600,000 children. So have humanitarian and political leaders, including Bernie, who on Monday urged President Joe Biden to stand by his earlier position that attacking the city was a red line and end all offensive military aid to Israel. I am once again asking for your financial support. Fuck you, Bernie. Anyway, Council <laughs> of American Islamic Relations National Executive Director Nahad Awad issued a similar call Monday evening warning that the Israeli government is hell-bent on using American financial, military, and diplomatic support to ethnically cleanse what remains of Gaza and commit another massacre. Um, yep. Any thoughts? Because I have a little bit more no, uh, not really. I mean, I do, I do find it funny. We we've talked about this, uh, and you're about to bring this next paragraph, right? Where it's it's a blaming it on B, right? Making that the sole issue, one one figurehead be the problem, and I, I'm worried about the Democrats using this, right, as a like come this election cycle as a bludgeon, be like, see, we'll work with you on this. You know, Trump won't. And he just wants to, like, turn the sand to glass over there. So, you know, like, you got to vote for us. Like, that's that's what I'm worried about this turning into, is that they'll try to make Biden into some, you know, he's voice of reason and been trying to fix this and yada yada. You know, like, that. that's the only thing I see in the future over there. So mm -hmm. we'll we'll see how that plays out, but you know, because like, how hard would it be for for him to just okay? Now we stop aid, to, like we stop sending military stuff to Israel because of Rafa, right? Even though we both know they have everything they need to wipe out the rest of Palestine without us, right? So right, and as I said, you know, like in the last segment, um. You know, Rwandans were killed in their genocide back in the 90s within 100 days. It was close to a million. Yeah. So how much, 
how many lives could be slain within like half that time right with the tech that israel has so like, you you want to do something how about stop funding the iron dome how about you know which is not mentioned, things. by the way, and we're and we're gonna get to that, but that has <laughs> not been mentioned, by the way. Okay, uh, I'll mention it then, I guess. <laughs> uh, like how we have a similar brain sometimes. Um. <laughs> anyway. Um. But speaking of BB, yeah. uh, President Biden must stand up to BB and take concrete action to end the genocide now. Awad continued, nodding to the Israel leader's legal trouble. The Prime Minister faces not only a potential consequences on a global sale for what the ICJ has deemed as a plausibly genocidal war in Gaza, but also a corruption trial in his own country. It is obvious Yanyahu wants this genocidal war to continue indefinitely so that he can remain in power, avoid jail, and fulfill his racist, far-right cabinet's demands for the complete destruction of Gaza and the massacre of its people, Awad said. It is long past time for President Biden to end our nation's complicity in this turning century of genocide. So while the, all of this is going on and, you know, and, you know, we're in the U.S. is saying, no, don't do anything. You know, oh, we we have to take action. We swear, don't do anything. Do not no, do it don't. too rough and all that. No, please, please don't. No, right. don't. <laughs> um, um, Jake jo Johnson yep. um, reports cutting off lifeline for starving Gazians. Israel seized control of Rafah crossing. This has devastating impacts for the people of Gaza who are already on the verge of famine said the UNRWA's director of planning. What does that mean? Mm. With tanks and ground forces, the Israeli military seized control of the Gaza side of Rafah's border crossing with Egypt on Tuesday, cutting off a critical humanitarian aid route as much as the enclave's population faces imminent fanning. So, no food. Yeah. So, we're going to starve you to death and kill you. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. Israel's takeoff of the Rafah crossing came hours after the country's military ordered more than 100,000 people in the southern Gaza city to evacuate ahead of a ground assault, which is moving forward after the right-wing Israeli government rejected a ceasefire proposal accepted by Hamas. So again, is, I read the entire thing of what mm. was offered. Hamas said, sure, we'll do it. Yep. Israel was like, no. No. Because, as we said, that involves rebuilding, that involves yeah. having uh, humanitarian organizations supporting the work, so that would be more of an international scope thing, yeah. um, which, as we said, Israel does not want. Yeah. They do not want they do not want Palestinians with the possibility of rebuilding their lives in Gaza. Yeah. Um, Ceasefire negotiations mediated by Egypt and Qatar are expected to continue in the coming days, which I think makes no sense. This yeah. is, that's just all smoke and mirrors. Um, so, so this is a tweet from Saul Stanford. The Rafa crossing is closed, cutting off the lifeline for 1.5 million people crammed in this tiny piece of land right at the southern end of the Gaza Strip. Hani Mahmoud reporting from Rafa. So, so this is probably just before um, Al Jazeera got cut from Israel, yeah. um, because that does include, you know, journalists too are not able to be there now, uh, yep. at least reporting from Israel. So let's see what uh, let's see what Hani has to say, and then we'll continue. Right now, the Israeli military is still operating inside Rafah crossings, and we did look at videos and, and footage emerging from the area uh, through official telegram accounts belonging to the Israeli military, associated with the Israeli military, but it's showing a great deal of damage caused by tanks and armored vehicles, causing a great deal of vandalism inside uh, the, uh, the crossing. Uh, the crossing uh, property uh, itself. The Israeli military started at early hours of this morning under heavy cover 
of intense bombing by artillery, shelling by, uh, by attack jets, by the quadcopters in, in the area of uh, the vicinity of the crossing, as well as the uh, attack drones at the eastern part uh, of Rafah city. What's going on right now did not, did not stop at just the text message or the phone calls that sent to people. People right now are forced to evacuate under heavy uh, intense bombing campaign at the eastern part of Rafah city. And the fact that the Israeli military right now is operating inside the crossing itself, cutting off the only lifeline right now to uh, the people in Gaza, particularly for the 1.5 million displaced Palestinians uh, here in Rafah uh, city. At this point, uh, this land crossing has been vital within the past months, allowing the uh, humanitarian aid to go through it, even though it was at a very low level, at a very low capacity, but it still it provided a lifeline for people crammed in this small part of the Gaza Strip. Now, we're seeing with the Israeli military presence here, all land crossings are closed right now by Israeli military. And this is a, a sort of sealing off the Gaza Strip and cutting it off from the remaining parts of the surrounding regions. So they're trapped, basically. Yeah. They're trapped and no, nothing can essentially right now at this point. Yeah, so, fish, in a, fish in a barrel, pretty like, much. Basically. Yeah. So it's really, right now, there's really melody. No, let's continue. How um, slides do that? God, <laughs> they can figure that out. Um, nope. Nope. Hold on. There you go. Did I do it? I fix it? There we go. Thank you. Two key humanitarian aid routes, the Rafa and Karim Shalom crossings, have been shut down, shut down for days as the Israeli military plows ahead with its Rafa assault in the face of international outrage. More than 600,000 children are currently living in Rafa, and aid organizations, organizations say Israel has no credible plan to protect them. Overnight, Israel launched deadly airstrikes in Rafah, describing its military operation in the overcrowded city as very precise, quote-unquote. One resident told Reuters that the Israeli strikes killed his wife and children. Jens Lark, a spokesperson for the United Nations for the Coronation of Humanitarian Affairs, told the Associated Press that Israeli authorities have denied the agency access to Rafah crossing. A lasting shutdown on the route, Lark warned, will plunge this crisis into unprecedented levels of need, including the very real possibility of a famine. He added that Israel's military is ignoring all warnings about what this could mean for civilians and for the humanitarian operation across the Gaza Strip. Speaking to Al Jazeera on Tuesday, the director of planning at the UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, Unwar, the most important aid organization operating in Gaza, said the closing of the Rafah crossing is having catastrophic impacts on everyone in Gaza. Since October, this has been the main entry point of goods coming into Gaza, said Sam Rose. There's only been a trickle of goods coming in, and since Sunday, the crossing has been closed completely. And this has devastating impacts for the people of Gaza who are already on the verge of famine. No aid coming in means no aid distributed after a couple of days. Rose continues, and equally importantly, Rafa and Karim Shalom are the only entry points for fuel in Gaza, so without fuel, there's no ability for trucks to move around, there's no ability for desalination plants to operate and to provide safe water, and there's no electricity. It cuts off everything. Rafa and Karim Shalom, they're the lifeblood for the small amount of goods that have been coming into Gaza since October, so absolutely devastating. Yeah. Like, it just seems so sad that these people are like, this is so devastating, but like, that's it. It's just all, that's all we, that's rhetoric, all we, but no action. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, who? what action could they, like, do? You know? I mean, they're the UN. You yes. would think that they actually have the means to do something. Yeah, but they, they only, only if we let them is the problem. You know? Like, we, we have, like, veto power over that whole fucking thing. Like, we're the only ones who said nay. Remember that motherfucker put his hand up? You know? Yeah. Like, that's... Like, we have veto power over that shit. So that's why. It's similar with the ICJ, right? What have you heard from them? 
Where's that shit been? Uh, I mean, we saw the ICC try to come after uh, Netanyahu, right? Netanyahu. And right. what and, happened with that? Uh, like, they're blocking, like, yeah. Uh, well, Republicans, but um, Democrats are going to follow suit to block yeah. it. Well, and I think so, it was, I think of- it was Baby Bush, uh, Baby Bush, who <laughs> made it to where we could physically send military force to retrieve any U.S. service personnel or whatever from the ICJ. Like, we could just go grab our our boys. So, you know, that's part of this shit, too. So, yeah, I mean, it's frustrating. I feel you that there's nothing happening. Yeah. So, yeah. um, Lark of the UN Humanitarian Affairs Office said that cutting off the supply of fuel to Gaza for an extended period of time would be a very effective way for putting hu- humanitarian operation in its grave. Volker Turk, the UN High Commissioner for hu- Human Rights, said in a statement that more attacks on what is now the primary humanitarian hub in the Gaza Strip are not the answer. First and foremost, there must be a ceasefire. Humanitarian aid must be allowed to flow freely and at scale, and the hostages and those arbitrarily detained must be released at once, said Turk. Those that elect to flout international humanitarian law and international humanitarian rights law must be held to account. Yeah. Um, I mean, it... Like, honestly, it just pains me, and, and we, I've said this many times, that Rwanda, they did not declare that a genocide until after close to a million people are dead. Yeah. Nam- M- Namibia, we also talked about on the show, I believe, last week. You know, I forgot the number of how many uh, Namibians were were killed in that massacre, but it only took Germany what I think, tw- like twenty twenty one, I believe, and this happened in the nineteen tens. Yeah, that what happened there was a genocide. So. And this is what I'm saying to people. It's like, we do not learn or do not care about our history to look, understand that the powers that be are not going to call this... Biden is not going to... Well, Biden is never going to call this a genocide. He's never going... No. He won't have to. He's probably going to be dead and gone by the time, you know, the idea of the West actually acknowledging that what is happening now is a genocide... Is going to come about. Like, Biden hasn't even apologized for the crime bill. No. Like, even to the point where even Hillary Clinton has acknowledged all, that that shit was a mistake. He doesn't even remember the crime bill. That was probably a long not. Time ago. But all he the barely same. remembers the tapioca he had for lunch. You know? Like, right. But all the same, it's like, at least, you know, like, but the idea is like, especially given for us in the West. They're not going to say anything regarding a genocide until after the damage is done. And so these are why college students are protesting. Do you not want that idea to happen? Like the fact that there's at minute, I'm going to say 40 plus thousand Palestinians who are dead. So this was, you know, this was when, when was this? May, May Today. 8th? I just pulled that just, I just pulled that just before we went live. Yeah. Because this was the trending story right now, just before we went live. Pulled this from CNN that says, Biden says he will stop sending bombs and ar- artillery shells to Israel if it launches major invasion on Rafa. But as you said has, earlier, and they, now what? They already have the weapons they need. Yeah. So, so this is redundant. Like, yeah. there is no point of saying stop when you've given them aid. And again, as you mentioned, Iron Dome is still a thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, they haven't even mentioned that. Um, but shout out to, uh, oh boy. What? Why this like, Took so long. There we go. Mm-hmm. So I pulled this from Instagram from Khalid Bejan. Uh I saw this on one of my friend's stories and I pulled it, which I think 
exemplifies this idea very well. The U.S. opposes the invasion of Rafa. Funny. Biden facilitated and fueled every single step towards its realization. $40 billion, 40,000 deaths plus, and free vetoes, say otherwise. Yep. So, you know, and it's so funny that people were celebrating the idea of like, finally, at least Biden is doing something. Yay! <laughs> Not thinking about the fact that like, Israel's good. Right. And even if, like, and even if they say, if, if the U.S. is like, we're not going to give you any weapons, is that going to stop Israel from stopping their onslaught anyway? No. No. So, no, you're, it's you're just, just a whole lot get, of bullshit. You're just going to get... I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. Like, that's all you're going to get. You know? Like, that's what it seems like every step of the way. You know, we mm. pretty much, uh, we, uh, I say we, governmentally, we've asked them, hey, please keep a lid on your annihilation and genocide. Like, only make it, like, a little bit of a genocide. And they're like, no, no, we gotta, we gotta be as evil as possible. So. Right. But anyway. um, Yeah. Just craziness all around, you know. I'm sure this won't be the last Palestinian city that they're going to try to massacre, but you know, just a par for the course. So yeah, I forgot to put it in, but I put out a tweet on Monday. We pu pulled it from Donnie Hughes' show. You mm -hmm. get got gave me that clip where that woman said, "You know, Holocaust quite simply is the greatest atrocity on film." Yeah, and she mentioned how black atrocities were not, and. You're going to go into this later with Al Jazeera, but yeah. this is going to be another genocide that's going to go down in more or less silence. Yep. You know, because of what the, how the media is pro uh, promoting, like not talking about this in the right way, and right. how everything related to P Palestine, you know, especially with TikTok in particular, is being censored or pull the plug on so that people cannot share anything of what's happening down there. And meanwhile, like, there are children there who are suffering. Yep. Just tells. Ugh, It really does. You know? So, and the places that talk about it get demonetized frequently, as I'm sure you know. So, go to code.com slash Indie News Network. You want to go Super Chats? You can't do that on the platform you're watching, scan the QR code on your screen, or put exclamation mark donate if you're in the chat live with us. Um you know, if you can't if you can't do that, no, go away. Uh you can like and subscribe, share and comment. You know, you you know the drill by now. Uh hit subscribe if you haven't already. You know? Send this to your friends, tell them to subscribe. And then they tell two friends, and then they tell two friends. And then they tell two friends.